Now you're probably already aware that it's an important decision in any food photo to pick the right backdrop, right? Something that's got a color that's going to complement your subject with enough texture for visual interest. It can really make or break your photo. But maybe you've been wondering, well, where should I get these backdrops, right? I mean, you can do the DIY route, but if you've been wanting to purchase surfaces, I'm gonna be sharing with you today some of my top favorites at a variety of different budget price points, as well as places from around the world. So if you wanna talk about backdrops, you stick around. <laughs> What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography and the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. And so like I mentioned, we are talking about backdrops and surfaces today. Backdrops being what's behind the food, surfaces being what's under the food, although we can kind of mix and match, interchange those terms. What's important is that you are thinking about what are you putting underneath or behind your food in order to really elevate your scene. And there are definitely some great options online retailers who sell backdrops and surfaces that I wanna share with you here today. Now, none of these are sponsored. There are no affiliate links with any of these backdrops. These are, most of these I have purchased myself. So these are genuinely coming from my heart, things that I personally love using in my studio. There is one with a discount code, but that's just purely a discount for you. There's no kickback to me. Now, if you do wanna make your own surfaces and backdrops, I've linked my DIY backdrops video below. I've also linked a tutorial to my friend B. She's got some really great techniques as well so you can go check that out but one of the first things that comes up when we start talking about backdrops and surfaces is what size should i buy now for me personally i find that at least 21 inches by 34 inches that's like the minimum that i want which is roughly two feet by three feet but to me that two feet by three feet that's large enough that i can compose a scene without having to you know compromise composition and things like that. I find if it's any smaller than that, I can start to struggle with the composition or need to do some Photoshop work in post in order to make up for you know the gaps on the edges where I was missing. So two feet by three feet, as long as it's that big, although bigger, bigger is always better when it comes to surfaces, just gives you more room to work with. So with no further ado, diving right on in. Uh, I'm gonna kind of start with the high end here at the front of the video, kind of the more expensive, real deal, real texture hand-painted backdrops and then work our way down through down to those roll-up vinyls which there's great options there as well so very first and foremost like if money were no object and I could only use one surface company for the rest of my life it would absolutely be Ericsson surfaces uh, I love their products Ginny has such a creative eye They've been doing this for years. They've worked with so many different photographers to know colors and textures and techniques and how to make things look worn and realistic but artistic. I mean, they've just, they've got knowledge that only comes with doing this kind of work over years and years. So I have a couple of these. I especially love their wood ones, the tobacco wood lathe. Like anytime I need like a cozy sort of fall feeling, for sure, I'm busting out that backdrop. But one of my prized possessions, absolute favorite surfaces in my entire collection was one that actually Jenny sent me this past year at Christmas time. And it's a big one. It's the 34 by 48. It's massive. It was like, oh my gosh, this is huge. Um, it's perfect though. I use it actually as a tabletop on my sawhorse. Just put that on the table and then sometimes I'll put other surfaces on top of it it's fantastic but this one was actually a custom collaboration together I had told her you know I want something speckled and light toned and neutral but with some warmer undertones to it she absolutely delivered and then the other side because she does double-sided the other side is this gorgeous emerald green so if you're looking for something that's really elevated and of course these are super high quality and um, they are definitely pretty hefty so so if you do a lot of traveling with your surfaces, these may not be the best fit, um, but for in-studio work, my top pick. And this is the one with the discount code. Jenny has graciously offered a 10% off for Bite Shot fans, so use Bite Shot 10 at checkout to get that discount. So then the other company where I buy real deal hand-painted surfaces from with real texture that I have been super impressed with time and again is Woodville Workshop. These folks are based out of Russia and I am always surprised at how quickly <laughs> they get the surfaces to me considering that they're coming from, you know, across the world. Uh, but these are absolutely 
absolutely beautiful. Again, double-sided. I do like kind of the weight of these. Uh, they're still heavy duty and they still have about a nice bit of heft to them, um, but they, they're not so heavy and they're not so thick. So you can really kind of stack them up really nicely and easily. Uh, but they've got some really creative colors as well. This purple one, I've had a lot of fun shooting with. I don't have a ton of opportunities for that, but the pinks and the purples, uh, there's kind of some dreamy factor there as well. And they've also got a super matte finish on some of these backdrops, which can definitely be a great advantage for food photography. Now there's one more company that I don't personally own any backdrops from yet, um, but I've seen my friends out in the UK using their backdrops and Food I Fancy, Tosh, she does beautiful work hand painted, hand done, really unique and creative. So especially if you are out of the UK or Europe, definitely check out Food I Fancy. They do great work as well. I'll link it down below. So now moving on to kind of the second category of backdrops, the printed backdrops. So those are all kind of, you know, we talked about the real deal, hand painted, textured. So now you can also get printed backdrops that are high quality and beautiful. So some of them are very nicely mounted on boards like these right here. See how this is mounted? get a sense of that. Um, there's also the ones that are printed on vinyl, which we'll get to in just a minute. But these ones that are printed on boards, these can be such a really nice option uh, because they're rigid, they hold their form, uh, they lay flat, all those kind of things. Uh, and so one of my picks that I absolutely love are Best Ever Backdrops. Now, Barbara from Best Ever Backdrops sent these to me, so thank you so much, Barbara. But I've really had a lot of fun playing with them, and especially this one in particular, I feel like I use this one a lot. It's got a lot of interesting texture, it's very convincing, it looks real, particularly for flat lay or that overhead perspective, like these just really make things pop. Um, but I also do shoot on a three-quarter angle with these, shoot with them backlit. You know, some people worry that some of these printed surfaces you'll get a lot of glare uh, but these are a very nice matte finish so you don't have as much of that challenge when it comes to the glare. I will also say that these clean up beautifully. You know, sometimes with those more expensive textured backdrops, as beautiful as they are, like if you spill like red wine on them, you're kind of out of luck. Whereas on these, I can spill on them, I can make messes, they just clean up super duper easy. So best ever backdrops, definitely highly recommend. Then there's also Bessie Bakes backdrops. And I love Bessie's backdrops. I've got some of the printed tile ones that she did in collaboration with my friend Rachel over at Two Love Studio. And one of the things that I love, because you know, a lot of these are like two-sided, right? Like best ever backdrops, you print one thing on one side, one thing on the other side. Uh, Bessie's, the tile came on one side and then it was just a plain backdrop on the one side and you might go, oh, it's just plain. But it's really nice to have just a white flat background on the back. And so I've actually used the background of my Bessie Bakes backdrop. I've used that for product photography whenever I need just kind of like a seamless white. But that being said, if I need like a larger sweep, like I'm doing a big product photography or I need that seamless without the seam at the bottom of the edge, I'll generally just go with like a big roll of butcher paper. And you can get those at a lot of different places. I personally get mine from the local uh, teacher supply store. So Lakeshore Learning, they've got the big butcher roll papers and you just, you know, get the white or whatever color you're going for. So that's another option as well. Now in terms of price point, I look at these as kind of the middle of the road option, right? They're not as expensive as your hand-painted textured, you know, Ericsson and Woodville's, but they're not as inexpensive as the ones I'm just about to share here in just a moment. They're kind of a nice middle of the road option. And so far, all of these have withstood a lot of wear and tear and being beat up in the studio. So I think that these printed on boards are a great middle of the road option. And then last but not least, although definitely the cheapest, <laughs> are the printed vinyl rolled up backdrops, right? If you have been on this channel for a while, about two years ago, first time I ever purchased an Ink and Elm backdrop, I shared a video about it. And I'm here to say, two years later, I'm still using these backdrops. They are great. They are so inexpensive, which is why I love them. Super easy, super fast delivery. They're great. They clean up beautifully. Uh, but what I what I mentioned before is you can't really do close-up macro shots on these, right? Because you can see that, that it's printed. It becomes very 
evident that this is a false texture. But for flat lay, especially if you're doing product photography, overhead shots, although I do find that I can still shoot backlit with a lot of these. I can shoot on angles and it's still lovely and beautiful. One of my absolute favorites in the Ink and Elm collection, and I have shared this on Instagram and others have also said they love this backdrop too, um, is the Grunge Storm. This one in particular, I use it frequently. And I actually also like to use it when I'm shooting overhead videos for clients. That that tasty style format, it's really nice to have something underneath that's easy to clean up, that as we're splashing around and making messes that I'm not stressed out about it potentially getting ruined. And all I do is that I secure it on the sides, I just tape it down to the table with gaff tape. So that helps keep it in position. And I always personally store these rolled up. So just like this, they come in those like cardboard containers that you can just put it right into it so that it's always rolled up. That's personally how I store these and how I find that they're fine when I unroll them out. You know, some people will complain that they purchase these and then they unroll them and they kind of have a bumpy surface surface. I personally find that when I unroll it, give it about 15 minutes and it just flattens out on its own from just resting there on the surface. So don't apply heat to them. Don't mess around with them. You know, don't store them in weird and wacky ways. If you just keep them rolled up just like this, I, I've literally been using this for two years on a very frequent basis and it continues to perform. It looks great. But the other good thing is too, is if I ever ruin it or if it ever starts to bite the dust or look really long in the tooth, not expensive to replace it. So like I mentioned, I own a lot of the Ink and Elm backdrops. They're based here in the US. There's also Capture by Lucy. I have purchased a number of her surfaces her backdrops that are vinyls they're absolutely beautiful very creative styles as well and she's based out of the UK so for those of you in Europe much easier to get a hold of those in terms of shipping prices and then one other company with printed backdrops that I absolutely love like super high quality gorgeous designs is Fondos para Fotografos and they are based out of Spain. They're actually students here on the Bite Shot. That's how I connected with them. And they recently started their company in the midst of lockdown and said, Joni, can we send you some backdrops? I said, absolutely. So check them out and they are totally beautiful. So that is another great option as well. So hopefully this gives you a lot of different ideas of options worldwide, different price points. You can do beautiful work with all of these backdrops. I use all of these in my studio. So hopefully this gets you excited to get behind the camera and start shooting. Now, like I mentioned, I'm sure there's some great companies out there that I've missed. So if there's ones that you love, feel free to share those down in the comment section below. And with that, I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon, okay? Bye.